Yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we're going to continue with this speed control of induction motors. Uh, last video, we have talked about on how to uh, control the speed of the induction motor by looking at the torque characteristic. We have this torque speed characteristic, whereby from this torque speed characteristic, we can identify the variable that actually can affect the speed of the motor as well as the um, the top. So we have looked into the armature, roto, resistance control, and we have looked a few methods of uh, ejection, roto voltage ejection, and finally we stop at the uh, controlling speed using inductance. Okay, so today and now we're going to continue with the controlling speed by adjusting the stator voltage. setting right so based on the equation below the top of the motor is proportional to the square of its stator voltage so we can clearly see that if we can change if we if we be able to change this voltage we also can change the top is it as well as the uh, the speed here okay for the same speed and frequency a small change in motor voltage results in a relatively large change in torque. So we can have a, a thyristor control, uh, a rectifier at the front end to control your voltage to your stator, and therefore we can control the speed. Okay, so now we we'll, we need to look at the uh, the characteristic again. So this is uh, we have two. Um, characteristic here two curve the first one is by having a voltage of V1 and then we reduce the voltage to V2 or, or vice versa we can increase the voltage from V2 uh, to V1 and we know that V2 is less than V1 okay so what happens if we look at the sum of the key equation the important equation the max the slip at maximum top this is the slip at t max okay so this is a slip or the speed because we know that we can uh, relate the slip to speed by this equation n equals to n s the synchronous speed one minus s z okay so um, if we look at this equation the voltage has no um, correction or has uh, not affect the slip. So if you change the uh, the voltage, it won't change the slip at maximum torque. However, if you look at this equation, if you look at this equation, the T max, okay, you can clearly see that the T max, the maximum torque, is actually affected by varying the voltage of the stator. Okay, so if you look at this figure above shows the characteristic of the motor under voltage control. It clearly shows that the motor speed can be modestly. Modestly is not really, I mean, uh, it's not really substantiate. This is not really uh, significant change. It can be when the voltage is altered. However, a wide range of speed control cannot be accomplished by this technique. Okay, I'm going to look at that later on. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, it is an excellent method for reducing starting current. So, if you look at the starting current, uh, this technique will actually <coughs> reduce the starting current and increasing efficiency during light load conditions. Terminal voltage cannot exceed the rated value to prevent the damage of the windings in solution. So there is a limit to how far can we increase the voltage. It must not exceed the V rating. V rate. So we have a rated voltage of induction machine. So you cannot exceed that V rate because all the windings are actually prepared or designed based on the maximum voltage. So terminal voltage cannot exceed the rated value to prevent the damage of the windings in solution. Only suitable for so this method is only suitable for speed reduction. If you want to reduce the speed, 
you reduce the uh, voltage that you can achieve uh, a lower speed. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this uh, particular point here. It clearly shows that the motor speed can be modestly changed when the voltage is altered. Whereby, if you refer to this particular uh, uh, characteristic here, so let's assume that we have uh, we are at this particular V1. We have this uh, voltage point here, and this is our characteristic, is it? Okay, so this is the plot or characteristic. So um, then if we just uh, consider this constant load, this is, uh, let's say that this is a constant load. Okay, let's say we have a constant load, so thereby we have only a single value of P. Okay, so you look at this is the steady state operation so your motor will operate at this particular point one right so when you reduce the voltage to v2 then you can see that the inter intersection between the load characteristic the load and the new torque speed characteristic when we reduce the voltage is that that particular t so if we measure this uh, speed it's just a slight change, isn't it? So we have omega 1 here, and then we have omega 2 there, isn't it? So we reduce very, if you compare from, the, uh, we're going to look at the example at all. Okay, so we reduce the voltage, but we only accomplish only a small window of change of speed. The speed is on the range of the, uh, the, the speed reduction is very small, isn't it? So very small. Uh, so that's why uh, there is a statement here, however, a wide range. So uh, a wide range speed control cannot be accomplished by this technique. And we also have this limitation whereby you cannot uh, exceed the rated value to prevent, to prevent damage of the winding. So let's look at the example. Uh, you can find an example on Sharkawi's note, page 211. So let's have a look. 211. Let's go to 211, Okay, so now look at example 7.5. For the motor given in example 7.1, so you have to refer to example 7.1. Assume that the load torque is constant, just what we discussed just now, and equal to 120 newton meter. So we have a T equals to 120 newton meter. This is the load torque. Ignore the rotational losses and calculate the motor speed at full voltage. So we ignore the P mu. Right, so P mu is ignored. All right, so we don't consider the P mu, and calculate the motor speed at full voltage. Repeat competition if the voltage is reduced by twenty percent. So what happens if we reduce the voltage by twenty percent? Right. So first, calculate the motor speed at the given load. The small slip approximation can be used. So we use the small approximation rather than the complicated equation here. Whereby we have V square over omega s, R prime s over uh, prime over s, the long equation says, so we just uh, use the approximation, this low slip uh, approximation, small slip approximation. Then we can find that the speed or the slip at the rated voltage is 0 0.0327. Therefore, the speed at full voltage is 1161 revolution per minute RPM. So now, calculate the new motor speed when the voltage is reduced. So we know that uh, we reduce the uh, the voltage by 20%, isn't it? So again, just like we did in the test, so you have to be careful about the, the wording of the speed is reduced or the voltage reduced by 20%, isn't it? Yeah. So reduced by 20%. And therefore, your new voltage will be uh, the old voltage, uh, which is 80% of the first voltage there. Is it? It's only 80% of the V1. So now we have TD new over TD, the same torque. We have the same torque here, so that's why you have 1. And then uh, we can find the V new V2. And then you have S new, so I believe this should be 0 0.8 V 
squared divided by v squared and we have s nu equals to uh, we want to find s nu divided by 0 0.0327 equals to 1. So if you solve that, you can uh, uh, you can uh, what do you call it? cancel this B2 and you can find out that the S nu equals to 0 0.0511 and that equals to 1139 RPM. Okay. So in this example, so if you look into the percentage in this example, note that a 20% reduction in voltage only yield about 5% reduction in speed. So even though you uh, you reduce the speed, uh, the voltage to 20% by 20%, but the speed only reduced by 5%. So, so it's a very small uh, speed reduction there. Okay? Alright. Okay, so now we just continue with this. Okay. So that is example. So now we're going to look at the other technique, which is controlling speed by adjusting the supply frequency so we know that ns which is the synchronous speed equals to 120 multiplied by f divided by p f is the frequency of the stator voltage p is the number of the poles so and we know that the top speed um, uh, we also know that if you plot speed against torque okay going to have this sort of Top characteristic, isn't it? So normally this is your S and S, isn't it? Uh, this slip speed whereby S equals to what? S equals to zero. Yeah, S equals to zero. Here you have S equals to one. Mm? So uh, if you talk about the slip, is it? But here you have N equals to zero. And here you have n equals to n s okay, in terms of speed. <clears throat> okay, so here and and normally your your uh, motor will operate in this linear region. Isn't it? For example, if you have a torque of uh, that sort of torque, okay, you can see that it will intersect here. So it will actually operate at that point. If you have a constant torque, for example, constant torque here, so the constant at uh, the intersection between the torque and the uh, the loop torque, so this is the loop torque, and with the induction motor torque, so this is E M, then this is the we know that this is T, we call that at the operating point. So if you change an S, right? So this point also can be change is it okay so that's the how we can control the speed by controlling the supply frequency so since the synchronous speed is directly proportional to the frequency of the stator voltage any change in frequency results in an equivalent change in motor speed so you can see here the impact of frequency on motor speed right so if you have a uh, if you increase the frequency so let's say that we have this f3 is the smallest frequency here F3 is the smallest frequency. Okay. And then we increase the frequency. We can see that the top now, or uh, first the speed. Okay. So if you look at the speed, the speed is increasing. The synchronous speed is increasing. So if I may, if I have, uh, for example, uh, how can I do? Let's say we have this top, uh, this load. Okay. Let's say this is the loop uh, top characteristic and therefore if you refer to the smallest so the speed start with that particular omega uh, n1 here n3 here okay so the motor will operate at that point and then if you increase the frequency the motor will operate at this particular point n2 and therefore finally if you increase to f1 then you have n3 this will be n1 3. so <clears throat> you can see that the speed is changed okay? however if you look at the, the maximum torque 
okay the thoughts the maximum thought is, is varying the t max is change uh if you look at this increasing the frequency will reduce the t max so this is equation uh, okay this is equation increase uh, let's look at the statement here increase in frequency will increase in no load speed and s increase frequency also reduce or decrease in maximum torque so if you have this equation this is the top the maximum torque equation so if you increase the the frequency so when you what uh, you increase the omega s is it uh, you increase the uh, the frequency you increase omega s as well as the uh, x here because you know that x equivalent is actually omega L E Q. So you increase omega, you increase omega s, and therefore maximum torque also increase. Okay, uh, reduce. Sorry, reduce. Okay, and then decrease in starting torque. So if you look at the current here, so uh, sorry, starting torque. So this is T one, T S one, T starting one. Uh, sorry. T starting three, this is T starting uh, two, and that one is T starting one. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the in terms of starting torque, uh, the torque is reduced when you increase the frequency, and then we also have increase in speed at maximum torque. Okay, if you refer to now, the speed is changed. So if you look at the slip. So the speed at maximum torque also change okay so this is s max one uh, three uh, then you have s max two and this is s max one okay? so the maximum uh, the slip at maximum uh, the torque maximum point three will be this one and then it increase to Max two and so increase in speed at maximum torque, and however it decreases in starting current. So if you can you may look at the impact of the current frequency curve here. So we have this equation, right? So from that equation, we can see that if you increase the frequency, the starting current is reduced. Is that it? From that point to that point. To that point so the starting current is reduced right of that equation here okay so that is the impact of uh, increasing uh, frequency to the speed and the current now we look at the effects of excessively high frequency current uh, high frequency so if we suddenly increase a very uh, uh, significant increase or excessively increase the frequency we may have a problem right uh, if we can consider this uh, torque speed characteristic here so we assume that the load torque is constant so now we look at the torque let's see this is load torque characteristic which is a constant this is a constant only one value here is it so i'm going to put as a t load here it's only one value right so, and the motor operates initially at frequency F1. So, it operates at this particular uh, frequency. Uh, sorry, uh, at this initially F1. And this is the speed and the torque it operates when it intersect with the load torque. So, this is the um, steady state operation uh, for F1 of uh, frequency. Now, if the frequency is suddenly reduce to f2 which is a significant reduce of the frequency um, sorry um, increase eh? if we increase sub, uh, significantly in, there is a significant increase in the frequency what can happen is now the speed top characteristic move from that one okay to this top speed characteristic and in this case 
your maximum torque if you look at the maximum torque at this point is lower than the load torque isn't it so this is your pl and this is your t max so there is no in uh, there is no intersection you cannot intersect this uh, the motor torque speed characteristic with the load torque so there is no steady state operation and this is known as a stalling a stall condition stalling condition stall and the motor will stall it doesn't uh, it cannot change uh, it cannot rotate at this particular uh, conditions yeah in this case no steady state operator can be achieved and the motor eventually stalls or even operates under braking so so it can also uh, go under braking condition or it just stalls doesn't move doesn't move doesn't rotate so how can we uh, improve this is by increase the supply voltage we know that if you change or if we increase the supply voltage to this uh, will increase the particular torque so if you increase the voltage then you can increase the uh, the characteristic here and therefore you can see that there is a intersection now if you look at that this is the intersection so uh, your motor will operate at steady state at this particular new point here All right so that is the effect of excessively high frequency and let's look at the effect of excessively low frequency so if you reduce frequency uh, 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 a, a very significant amount of frequency you can see that reducing supply frequency reduces speed of course all right so if you reduce then the speed reduce and increases motor current so there is a actually that uh, it's not good is it so when you have a very low frequency then you actually increase the motor current mm -hmm. so if you look at that increases motor current and because of that x value because you increase that uh, if you reduce that therefore i will increase the risk okay? so that is no good because you have a high current now in uh, running in your uh, uh, motor okay so let's look at the example shakawis page 216 okay let's see 216, 212, 214. Okay, you can also look at this. Uh, uh, 214 is for the increase of speed. This is the top. Okay, you can uh, go for that uh, example as well. But I'm going to go to 214. Excessive effect. Okay, for the motor described in seven point six, compute the motor speed and starting current if the frequency is decreased to fifty hertz. So you can go through solution. So you calculate the synchronous speed, and then we have this three point one four, the conversion of the RPM to radian per second, and then to compute the slip, let's use the small approximation again. We have this small slip approximation. And you get that S equals to 0 0.0245. The new speed at 50 hertz. So you reduce the speed from 60 to 50 hertz. Now we have this uh, equation. And therefore, which is if you calculate, recalculate, which is about 90% reduction in speed. Uh, there is a 90% reduction in speed if you reduce the uh, frequency from 60 hertz to 50 hertz. And next the starting current at 60 hertz is so if you uh, start with the 60 hertz you have 68.75 but if you reduce the frequency to 50 hertz now you can see that there is an increase of 20 percent increase in the starting current so note that the frequency reduction leads to a reduction in speed however there is an increase in starting current okay Right, so therefore, when we look at this uh, voltage control and also the frequency control, and if you combine both control 
and to take the benefit of both so that we can control more efficiently your motor even now it becomes voltage frequency ratio control okay? whereby you change both voltage as well as the frequency this can be achieved by using a proper uh, 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 proper uh, rectifier or inverter okay so we can have a pulse width modulation uh, converter uh, that can change both magnitude of voltage as well as the frequency of the stator right <clears throat> okay so open loop speed control so now we also uh, we only focus on the open loop speed control of induction motor by input voltage frequency control to the increase in the supply frequency increases the motor speed and also reduces the maximum torque of the motor and therefore control the speed by adjusting the supply frequency and then the increase in voltage result in an increase the maximum torque we have look at this uh, effect uh, controlling speed by adjusting the stator voltage so if you combine these two features we can achieve a control design by which the speed increases and the torque is kept constant it's kept the same this is known as the voltage frequency control so the uh, the, the vf control VF control. Right. So let's look at the, the from the effect of increasing frequency. We have looked into this before. So let's assume that we have a this sort of load top characteristic. So this is the load top characteristic. Okay, we have a curve there. Okay. Let's start with a point one is used as our reference at voltage V1. So we start at V1 here. F1 and V1 and this is a fan type load so this is sort of a fan type load it has a curve here right okay so uh, when it operates with this fan type load so it operates with that particular steady state point number one yeah, steady state number one here increase the frequency of the supply to F2 so when we increase the supply to F2 so we have this condition whereby the maximum torque doesn't reach doesn't cross the load torque is that it okay. so uh, while keeping the voltage the speed of the motor increases and the maximum torque decreases or reduce so load torque unfortunately higher than the maximum torque by motor so no steady state operating point can be achieved and the motor is stalls okay. we have discussed that before stall or probably reduce in the speed Okay, so how we can correct this is by um, increasing the voltage. So we have both uh, increased frequency as well as we increase the voltage. And therefore, that is why we have this VF control. So VF control. So we increase frequency and we also increase the voltage. And so this is where the where VF control comes. Now let us keep the supply frequency to the new value. So you have this uh, still we operate at F2, but we increase the V2, V2. Hmm? So we have a new characteristic. So we have a new characteristic here. And if you look at the intersection, so it moves now to this point, isn't it? So it intersects with this load torque at this particular point number two so now this become the steady state operating of the steady state i am so your induction motor now operate at particular this particular uh, point number two uh, so motor operates at point two and this is known as a new steady state point and it's achieved at this particular point okay the change in voltage and control uh, frequency is a powerful method for speed control. Note that both frequency and voltage can be changed simultaneously by the pulse width modulation rectifier technique. Okay, hence providing VF ratio control. Yeah, VF ratio control. So for special operating performance, so we know that if you divide, so if you have VF, so we have actually equals to a. Uh, 
variable a, isn't it? So there are two techniques. One is that you adjust the a, which is the voltage and f here doesn't change. I mean, uh, change, but the with the change of a, isn't it? For example, you increase twenty percent here, but uh, the free uh, the the frequency is only changed fifteen percent. For example, is it? And you have a different a from a one. So a two will be different value from a one. Is it? Okay, but that is only for special operating performance. But normally, uh, uh, most commonly, it is a fixed voltage ratio, which is you increase twenty percent of B. You also need to increase fifty percent of uh. You need to increase thirty percent of current uh frequency here. Great. So you have a constant A two equals to A one. Yeah. So you have a constant or fixed value of ratio between V and F. Right. And therefore, if you do that, if you look at this point, you have a we call this at the constant torque operation. Okay, so if you have that, then you have a maximum toxicity uh, max, and this is known as constant torque operation. Constant torque operation, yeah, which is referred to the maximum torque. Hmm? So we keep the fixed VF ratio. We also keep the T max uh, equals at any ratio. Okay. Right. So speed talk and say now we let's look at the uh, what's the benefit of having this fixed VF ratio. So this is equation. Right. So T max equals to that particular equation here. And then if you uh, make an approximation. Assume that x equivalent is higher than both these two equations here. Uh, x eq is very very large compared to r1. Then you can ignore the r1 and therefore the t max equals to the speed talk uh, the talk speed equation on the left v2 v squared divided by 2 omega s x equivalent. And you, if you replace that with the further equation here, and finally you can estimate the T max equals to V F squared, and therefore if you fix V over F, you also fix the value of T max. And if you look at the current as, as well, and if you can do the same approximation, you can also have this current equation, which is described by V over X Q, and therefore that also depends on the value of V over F. So if you fix VF, you also inc uh, fix the value of starting current. So that is the benefit of having the fixed ratio whereby you can fix the starting current and you also can fix the maximum top. Huh? Right. Vol but however, again, so again, you have to remember voltage must not exceed beyond rating. Excessive voltage may cause damage to insulation of motor winding. Normally, the voltage cap below 100% of rate value. So, you, you actually, you can uh, uh, have an extra 10% uh, of the rate value. Okay, you, so you still can have that uh, between, I mean, just not more than 110% of rate value. And you have this fixed uh, ratio. Okay, so let's look at the example. Okay, fish 219. Okay, uh, uh, repeat example 7.7 .7 for constant VF control. The voltage frequency ratio is 400 and, uh, 480 divided by 60. So that becomes the ratio of 8. So when the frequency of the supply is reduced to 50 Hz, remember we have uh, starting with uh, 60 Hz. When the frequency of the supply is reduced to 50 Hz, the supply voltage should also be reduced to um, 400 volts to get the ratio of 8. So we want to maintain at 8. So the uh, the venue also reduced to 400 volt. 
since it depends on the supply frequency alone the synchronous speed at 50 hertz is the same as the calculated however the slip is dependent on the supply voltage given the again small slip transmission here so s equals to 0 0.0353 so this slip is higher than the one calculated the new speed at 50 hertz is 2894 yeah. so it's a 2894 the starting current is at uh, 60 hertz is 68.75 however if you reduce the 50 hertz now it's reducing to 68.5 so that shows that the static current is almost unchanged due to the vf control 68.75 68.5 okay however uh, the speed is reduced uh change huh? okay renew Alright, so that's for the Okay, next is sleep energy recovery For sleep energy recovery technique What we do is we take a voltage on We try to recover the losses that we have in the circuit in the, in the, in the motor okay we know that this is the let's, let's look at the power flow so we have an input power which is 3 multiplied by v i cos theta so the same fish bone this is a fish bone uh, a power flow so we have an input power and then there will be a copper loss due to the stator cup copper loss so it's 3 multiplied by i squared r1 and this and also the iron loss yeah, 3 multiplied squared over rm and magnetizing the resistance and this become the gap power great the gap power p gap which is travel which travel from stator to the roto right and this power the uh, roto we call it roto input power or the other name is a gap air gap power pg and this is equal to td number no. multiplied by omega s and this power is uh, actually minus the copper we have this as a slip we call this a slip power which is due to the copper uh, of the resistor copper loss of the resistor and that also known as a slip power spg and the gap power, the rotor input power minus this loss will become the mechanical or the developed torque. Yeah, this is the developed torque. Again, TD multiplied by omega. Right, so it's the de developed torque. And if you minus that developed torque with a rotational loss, then that becomes the mechanical output power, which is T multiplied by omega. And that can also be shown by this fishbone. Uh, diagram here and therefore if you look at this particular slip power this can be manipulated and that will actually affect the change of the speed yeah? so how to do that and this is where we have this slip energy recovery method from that uh, slip power we can have a slip energy recovery uh, method to control the speed Okay, so how to do that? We have to have this circuit here, whereby in the front end here we have the a full wave rectifier, uncontrolled rectifier because we use the diode D1, D3, D5, D2, D4, D6. So we have six diode connected in full, uh, we call it a full bridge connection, and then we have this inductive component here L conductor and we connect with a fully controlled inverter on the output side here and that that is a reconnect to your uh, voltage three phase voltage here okay so if we reconnect that to the uh, voltage a live voltage here and this circuit is known as the static scarabus scarabus circuit okay whereby the slip energy recovery, the slip energy can be recovered 
and can be con can control the speed of your motor. The rotor in this circuit is linked back to the stator windings via two converters, three-phase arm control diode AC DC rectifier, and we have a three-phase thyristor control DC to AC inverter. Right. So next, uh, the output of the converter is connected to the DC AC converter through inductive element, which is this inductive element here. The output of the DC AC converter is a three phase system connected to the same source feeding induction motor. The uh, slip energy recovery circuit divides the slip power into two parts the losses in the rotor resistance and the power returned back to the source. Uh, as I show you just now, this is the slip power. The losses is in the rotor resistance. This is slip power. The power returned back to the source that is converted into the uh, mechanical power. Is it? Right? And you can look at the derivation from the uh, Sharkawi's book, page 220. There is a few lines of derivation here before you can have this equation at the, out, uh, the last final equation, which is N, the speed of the motor, can be controlled by varying the uh, thyristor or the firing angle of the thyristor at the output side. So we have this thyristor control inverter, is it, on the uh, output side. So if you control, if you change that value, we can also change the speed of the motor. So equation above shows that adjusting the triggering angle of the DC-AC converter can control the speed of the machine. And the range of alpha is from 90 degree to, uh, to 180 degree. You have to operate that alpha within 90 degree to 180 degree. You cannot go below 90 degree because you can have a motor speed that will exceed the synchronous speed. This uh, is not allowed. Really? So you have to operate the inverter with the thyristor angle, the triggering or the firing angle of the thyristor control inverter uh, with the alpha in the range between 90 degree to 180 degree to make this successful. Okay, so that's the uh, overall the speed, the control of the induction motor. So next uh, uh, video, we're going to look at the uh, the the closed loop. Okay, well, probably the uh, the modeling of the induction motor as well as the closed loop. A control of the industry. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.